Hello. Hi. What's the name of our, our, our show, really? Are we really hitting naked video? Because nobody's really going to know what that means. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Kilby's audio experience, experience. experience. <laughs> Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Hi guys, welcome to Video Marketing Uncensored. We are Miss Kilby's Video Conservatory for Girls, and this podcast is all about helping female entrepreneurs create video campaigns that grows their business. And today we're talking about the top mistakes that people make when recording video for the first time, and we're gonna give a handful of examples and how to avoid them. Welcome, welcome everybody. Uh, yeah, we're probably also gonna delve into a whole whole bunch of other stuff but you're gonna have a ton of takeaway throughout so stoked you're here and let's again light this clam bake and I think these will be in no particular order by the way um, but I think one of the biggest mistakes that I see is that people don't know who they're talking to and so they just start making video that they want to make or they don't know what they want to make. And so they spend all this time and they put it out there and it doesn't resonate with anyone because they're not speaking to anyone in particular. So that is, you know, I think that's an underlying issue, but when people just get started, they kind of forget about the fact that you really need to have your ideal customer in mind when you are creating content and you speak directly to that person and everything around your content has to um, revolve around that. You know, once you, once you figure out your, that ideal right fit, you know, at, at least prospect, right? Um, you know, my goal, and I think our goal here is always to get to the emotional and psychological center of where right. they're hurting, right? And and we hear this a lot, like find their pain point. But the reality of it is, is business owners in general, male, female, or otherwise, are obsessing about certain things. Mm -hmm. And once you go on with it, you start to realize certain patterns about your customers. Yeah. About your potential clients or your clients that Absolutely. they fit within a set pattern of behavior and then i think what we have to do is what i what i failed to do was i was trying to talk to everybody mm -hmm. and then i finally figured out who the archetype was right yeah and the archetype was uh you know a single person so i was able to talk to them as if you know we always talk about Callahan, you're like everybody's favorite cousin, right? Like when we go to Albuquerque, you got to hang out with Callahan. She'll take you to those awesome places and you know you're getting great tacos, right? Um, uh, and, and, and that's how you come off on video. But, but I mean, let's face it, we all started somewhere. And, you know, so, so Megan, what were some of the first mistakes you made when you know, what's the goofiest mistake you've made? Well, I think it's really, uh, that's really interesting what you said. And it's 100% true that you don't, sometimes you just don't know who you're talking to. Um, and that happens with any type of video, even if you're not selling. Like it's still, if you're just, you know, you're trying, for instance, like I used to make, I mean, I still do make comedy videos, but a lot of times it was like, my friends would see the videos and they're like, I don't know who this is for. Like, are you entertaining yourself? Are you trying to entertain someone else? Like what it is, you know, what's going on? Uh, so I think having a niche, a niche, a niche, I never know which way to say that word. Just no matter what you're doing, whether you're selling or you're entertaining or whatever your goal is, 100% keeping that in mind. Um, and then there's a slew of technical issues that I 100% did and I'm sure I mean, I've seen, I see all the time when people make videos and they don't really know, um, you know, in terms of like framing, lighting, all of that. And we could delve more into those. But um, one more thing I was going to say about who you're speaking to. Another thing is that people, and we kind of said this last time, people 
are copying what someone else is doing in their video so it seems super inauthentic and you just can feel it and that makes whoever you're directing the video towards feel uncomfortable and kind of just not interested in what you're selling or saying etc yeah yeah 100 percent <laughs> Oh, I feel like I've already spoken a lot. Um, Alex, what are some of the, some of the first mistakes um, that you have? I mean, like lighting, audio is so crucial. It's so important. And people sometimes, a lot of times, just underestimate it. And they're like, it's fine. I'll just, um, I'll use my phone and I'll use... I'll use the audio from that, but forget that they're holding their hand over the microphone and then everything sounds like a pocket dial and it's just like rustling and um, that time, you know, like that, you know, hopefully you learned from it, but. So audio is one of those things like you could shoot your video with a Polaroid as long as the audio is great, yep. right? And there are really inexpensive ways to do that. And maybe we should put some links down in the, the description yeah. um, for people to be able to go and get like, you know, that small onboard shotgun mic or, uh, you know, one of those little, have you seen those little wireless mics, right? There it is. Oh, I have that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I have that too. Um, I actually, Callahan and I have the same equipment. Yeah. Um, you know, um, what, I, what, I, uh, what else helps is a small tripod, right? Like something like mm -hmm. this, Niwar makes oh, that's a good one. like the best cheap shit, right? Yep. It, it's like, it, it really does service what you need and you're not gonna go broke doing it. Cause I think that's the thing is people think they have to go out and buy a $1,500 camera. You don't, right? Don't Eventually, I think, you know, here's the, here's the, the, the thing also that I think we have to talk about. Eventually quality is gonna have to be a deal, right? You're gonna have to up your game and I think that's what we try to teach people. But at the beginning, think about what we were making. I just went back to the very first YouTube video I did before this, just to see what it was. And I was so sincere. And I was like, you know, I was gonna be like a guru. Mm. Right? And just, oh. it was, it was, it was, the, the intention was right, mm -hmm. right? My, my heart was in the right place, but the execution, um, came off because I really didn't know what business I ran, right? Yeah. Was I helping entrepreneurs use video to build their business or was I helping filmmakers to become, you know, more recognized and play big in the industry? And I rode that line and I'd go back and forth because what I wanted to do was catch all of them. Yeah. And now for my other business, right? It is literally for the most part, 35 year old to 42 year old filmmakers really that have been beat up in the industry yes so not like you don't do you get people do you get like younger like 20s or not not really no and the reason i don't take them in that business is because um they haven't been beat up enough yet yeah. right they're still yeah. thinking they're going to become the next Martin Scorsese, which maybe one or two of them will. And I wish them all of that. Right. But the reality of it is, is if that's, we have to force authority, right? We have to use the single greatest communication device ever devised by human beings. We have to use it now. Right. And, and you don't get away without marketing. You don't get away without creating video. No, and if you are no. not using video, I don't, I'm not trying to use some scare tactic here, but if you're not using video, uh, I don't think um, you stand a shot, especially in the next 18 months. Right. It's right. funny because, so, you know, my dad is right now it's on hold, but the CBD thing he does, my dad owns a mm -hmm. CBD company um, and everything's kind of been shut down for the most part. So we were looking at Corey and I went to pick up food the other day. Um, and there was a CBD store that was open. So we went in and it had really cool stuff. And I told my dad, I was like, when you guys reopen, you should look at their stuff. Cause it honestly, it looks kind of better. Um, but <laughs> I 
But then I went to their social media and there was not one video. Um, and I couldn't tell, like it was super all over the place. I couldn't tell what their products were. I couldn't tell the pictures were really bad quality. Um, and just the fact that there wasn't any video or like actual marketing really deterred me from wanting to buy their products. And I didn't even realize that until you were just saying that, Alex, where I was like, ooh, that totally just like put that business down a notch. Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, that's such a great opportunity for people to get to know you on such a personal level. Like people fall in love with you yeah. as much as they fall in love with your brand or your business, right? Nobody's going, man, I love the fact that they have, you know, uh, you know, a 46 John, a 46 millimeter Johnson rod, you know, nobody's going, I think that that, oh, sorry guys, that sounded horrible. My What's point to this is, <laughs> mean, what I mean, what I mean is, what I mean is product features, right? We talk about yeah. it all the time, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. nobody cares that, you know, you've got rack and pinion steering. Like, I don't right. even know that's a thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, yeah. Yeah. wrong place to use Johnson Rod, but that was from Seinfeld. <laughs> I thought people would get it. Yay. Well, yeah. you know. What's funny is I went in and the owner was this really nice guy and he just started like talking a lot. He was telling me his whole story. He moved from California and he's really passionate about like spreading awareness about CBD here. And I left and then after I looked at their social media, I was like, wow, what a missed opportunity for this guy to like tell his story, connect with people because he was super nice and genuinely passionate, passionate about it. Um, and he's reaching, I mean, for the most part, more younger people are interested in CBD um and it was just a missed opportunity yeah yeah i mean there were there it was like you're literally as he's talking to you you're watching his content no i was like please they're like, they're like that should be it yeah. right yep. that's all you need to say and it's that simple what do you really stand for what do you believe in and so it is that getting started part you know um you know from an audio standpoint there are plenty of um ways to get good audio and if you don't yep. want to have to sync sound and you don't want to have to do all of that stuff you can uh either go in camera and we can put mm -hmm. down some some yeah. ways of doing that you know directly into camera which is way easier and i do it all the time or you can buy one of these you know h4ns or now there's 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 newer versions of this yeah. but you get the idea a digital video a digital uh, audio recorder they're inexpensive. Um, the audio is amazing. And, and so really concentrating on audio. And then if you don't have a ring light, you can get a ring light for 25 bucks. Oh, yeah. You know? and, and get a ring light if that's what you want to do. I get it that, you know, I don't have the money to do all this. Get it in pieces. Yeah. Right? Just get it in pieces. And, and that's what I did. Slowly but surely, I collected equipment that allowed me to up my game um you know the best blog camera i can think of dudes is is uh i love it is the cam canon m50 mm. it's got a flip out um uh here let me see if i have it right here so it's got this flip out screen where you can see yourself you know it's super small like if i have the yeah. the kit lens on it like Not it's yet. just super small and I have a, a, a wireless mic on it, but, um, and it shoots 4k shoots 120 frames a second. Uh, you know, so you get 75% of what you get from a major like Sony a seven three. Yeah. Yeah. And it's 490 bucks. If you, if oh. you look right. Right. right? And, and so you get all of the bells and whistles and it's a, it's a, a, a you know, a, a, almost a full frame camera. So the image that there's not a ton of compression. And what we mean by compression is that when you have this small chip inside a camera, it squeezes the image and kind of downgrades it a bit. Yeah. Um, you know, they're your iPhone. Those yeah. Are amazing. Are amazing. You can use, I, so I've been, there's been several instances where I have a black magic camera, which is definitely more expensive. The quality is amazing, but like I, it was seven years until I got that. So, um, I film all the time with, there's this app called Filmic Pro 
um, we can put it below. And I think you, you buy it for like, I'd say 12 to $15. And it literally turns your iPhone, which is already amazing, into like this yeah. insane 4K camera. Um, and I've compared the footage I've shot on that with, the, with my like cinema grade, like movies are filmed on it, black magic camera. And there are some shots where you literally cannot tell the difference with that app. Mm -hmm. um, so, especially for the web. Oh yeah, so oh, it's yeah. there's that, and between that, getting a mic that just plugs straight into your smartphone. Um, we yesterday we posted our Instagram some examples of them. Um, there's a brand called Pop, and they have them for literally like twelve dollars. Um, mm -hmm. And I have one, and it's very good. Like you just shove it in the back of your phone and you know cl clip it onto you and that will already between those two things your it'll look and sound so much better so much better yeah um i'm looking up like there are those new pen mics right um they they look like little boxes they're wireless yeah right mm -hmm. yeah um and a lot of my friends are using them they're a bit bulkier than stuff, but because we're making videos where people know we're making a video, it doesn't matter that you can see the mic or it doesn't matter yeah. that it's yeah. like you have a pen clip to your thing. And there's plenty of people who don't care about showing the mic. If they do, they do, because I think right. people are just used to seeing that, right? I have, I literally have my right here. Especially now. I also, um, I, another thing that I've done a lot um, that I was thinking about this morning is framing. Yes. So a lot of my first videos that I've looked at, the framing, and by framing I mean what, how you're in the camera. So a lot, and what a lot of people do, they have way too much headroom. So it'd be like I'm like here. Yeah. Or they have, or their head is cut off. Um, and there were so many times where I would spend hours filming like a comedy sketch, and part of me would be cut off. Um, or my tripod was crooked. So yeah. it was a little like, you know, the angle was off, uh, stuff like that. So this mic is called Sabine Tech Smart, Smart Mic, and we'll put a, a link down below. Um, How much is it? It is 139 Okay. Um, I'm sure you can get it cheaper. Um, let me see if this one, yeah, the, it goes all the way up. 278 but i think at some point you get what you pay for in a way yeah yeah you know what i mean like if you go out and get a 22 dollars wireless mic it's gonna be super trebly it's gonna be that stuff and i know everybody doesn't have 139 dollars, but at some point you're gonna have to up that game Absolutely. right but there yeah. are plenty of you know this joby wavo mobile compact uh one that Callahan and I have. Um, oh, that's the exact. Is, is yeah. like forty bucks. Yeah. And you can use that, right? And so I think that um, you know that audio. So you you were bringing up a uh, um, kind of headroom and what you do. The other thing people love doing is center punching everything. And what we mean by center punching is everything is straight on and everything is symmetrical. Yeah. Right? It really does make it interesting. If you move yourself to the right or to the left, you can put graphics and lists and things like that 100%. next to you in that field. And you can also yeah. populate that field with like little light features. You don't have to do anything but buy a $10 LED panel. Uh, on Amazon and throw it behind a chair and, and send it up a wall to give some depth to your world, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. I think that that, that, that that center punching, sometimes it works, right? Sometimes it's, it, it can be super intimate, but I always put myself right or left because I like being able to call out kind of things with graphics. Yeah. You can get, again, Cheap graphics packages or, you know, Final Cut Pro or any kind of yeah. editing software is going to have a built-in graphics package that you can use. And and just, I, I think that just those little things can make it more interesting and stand out, right? And, and absolutely. Also, um, another thing that I struggled with the longest was lighting. 
Um, I, I, when I first started buying stuff, I invested in, but like not a lot of money at all. I got this huge lighting package on Amazon. It was on sale. I think it was like usually $300 for these big, um, like, what are they, what are they with the, the screen on it? The soft box, soft sorry, box. soft box lights. I got them for like a hundred bucks. There was four of them. Um, but I didn't know like where to point them or like how to balance that with the room light. So yeah. a lot of my videos, um, if I shot it on my iPhone, like the lights coming in and out is changing. Um, it looks like super yellow on one side and then super blown out on the other. So just, and if you don't have light, I think what people should realize is that if you turn off all the lights in your room or wherever you're filming and just use the natural light, that will look so much yeah. better than using both or just using the you know the yellow light from a room yeah well right i mean and you know that that is not to get too far in the weeds you know there are two kinds of light in when making video you have tungsten which is that yellow home light right that's the thing that yeah. happens right and it, and it mm. looks like a sort of tungsteny it looks it looks amber right yeah and then yeah. you have led which is uh kind of that daylight feel and you really want to go for more blues and less oranges and reds um so that is is going to give you that kind of photographic look right mm -hmm. um you know and and we can probably we're, we're definitely going to do lighting tutorials and we're definitely yeah. going to do camera tutorials yeah. and you guys are going to see all of that stuff uh but but i think in terms of you know, mistakes that people make is, um, you know, to recap, it's, it's, you got to talk to one person. Um, you don't have to put yourself in the center of the frame, find an interesting way to do it. Remember, there is a background that people pay attention to, right? You have to control your background. There yep. has to be some order to it or something that's bringing some life to it, right? And um, it can have a cluttered look like this, or it can be clean like Callahan or, or you, right? And, yeah. and uh, um, you know, I, I think that uh, as long as there is something that gives the eye places to move, mm -hmm. you really, you really keep, keep yeah, people interested. Yeah. In There's a, also, for background, um, I learned this from doing a lot of spokesperson videos just for different brands. Um, sometimes it gets boring. Yeah, it was so cheesy, but sometimes it gets boring just with like the same background over and over. So my friend showed me these backgrounds on Amazon that are literally only like 10 bucks each. It depends. Like, you know, some go up to a hundred, but you can get this. It looks the same for about 10 to $20 and they have all different colors. So you just buy like a stand. I clip the background on and then it changes up like I got a lot better responses on videos that I used. Like I have like a pink glittery background or just like a bright blue one just to make yeah. it pop a little more. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll just get better at that stuff right now. That's use what you have. I mean, yep. the, th Keep going. the thing is start where you are with what you have. Don't beat yourself up because you're not universal studios yet. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and go ahead and, and lean in and use those things as weapons. Don't use that. Don't sit there and think that you're at a disadvantage because at the end of the day, it's about your idea, not about how amazing you are at making, you know, cinematic videos. Does that start to begin to be the place you want to go? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. Everybody starts to get into a little bit more of, you know, the, the video that's coming out this week, or, you know, that, the video that came out last week, right? Uh, where Callahan goes on, you know, her adventure. That's a bit more cinematic because there were people involved, other people involved. Yeah. There was some fairly expensive equipment. <clears throat> there was, you know, kind of, uh, you know, gimbals and things like that. A gimbal is so it doesn't look like the camera's shaking. You can walk anywhere with it. Um, and, and, you know, that's because we are a video company, but that's yeah. what we do for a living. But the reality of it is, is that it's also, um, you know, you, you just need to start with one. So I think 
to elaborate a little bit on that, something that, <clears throat> excuse me, I find interesting is when people say like, what do I need? What do I, what do I need to start? What do I need? You need what you have, but what you want to aim for depends on how professional you want to come across. You know, if you run a lemonade stand, something down and dirty, scrappy, in, in the moment, on the spot, um, to pop onto IG Live and tell people where you're set up for the day or a food truck or whatever that may be. But if you are doing sponsoring corporate events or you're on a speaking unit, you're a coach, you have a service-based business and you're putting all of your stock, your livelihood into this company, you want to match the level of professionalism with the production level you know, that's what you want to aim for. And so always kind of keep that in mind. And again, if you know who you're talking directly to, who that archetype is, who your right fit client is, you understand the psychological reasoning behind what their issues are, what they're trying to solve. And so you meet them there with what is going to affect that change for them. So you can, you know, you can start with exactly what you have, um, but always have the goal, just like personal professional development, you want to continue to grow your production quality and value um, so that the value that you're bringing to your ideal client continues to increase. And it's so much easier of a buyer's journey for them. It's so easy. Why would they not say yes to you? So just something to keep in mind. Yeah, I, I think, I think um, uh, that that is a really good point about meeting them in their moment, right? Like not everybody is in the same place. Some people know what their problem is. They just don't know what product or service they're looking for. Some people don't even know they have a problem. Yeah. Like if you take the iPod, right? Like we all had CD players that were yeah. like dinner plates strapped to our arms when we'd go out for a run, right? And they'd yeah. skip all the time. But we just found these weird workarounds. We had no idea there was this thing called an MP3 player, which... Uh, Steve Jobs then said, can you imagine if you went out for a run and you had 100 songs on this thing, right? It was like, like it was still the size yeah. of a brick, but it was so much more convenient. You were like, that's what I need. I'm so yeah. sick and tired of like, I have to only listen to one CD for a one hour run, you know, and it's like, I want to change it up and I have to make, make CDs and it's horrible, right? It's like a job. But and then the he's time, that, but that you didn't amazing. know you had that problem. No, you didn't yeah. know that this, you just found a workaround and then you were like, he told you what your problem was, right? And I think that, um, you know, so people, some people um, know the problem, they know you and all they need is the offer, right? So if you can know who you're talking to, even segmenting down deeper into your audience, sometimes you're gonna make videos for one portion of your audience. Sometimes you're going to make videos for another. Sometimes you're going to make videos for the newcomer. Sometimes you're going to make videos for the people that have been with you for a year, right? So I think that that um, those are those are fun videos to make because they're like, believe it or not, you want the smallest audience possible at first. You want the most narrow audience possible, right? And and. And when you get there, it's really exciting to watch what happens because what you do works. Hey, are we boring you again? Oh my God. God. <laughs> my God. Can I tell my um can I tell my music analogy story? Okay. So so, so I come from the music business um and um I I worked in television, so music broadcasting, and um, that's what I studied, so a lot of music promotions and marketing of um, recordings and things of that nature. And it's so standardized across different industries. <clears throat> Talking about people that, that, that one person that you're speaking to and the people that know their problem. I heard a song on the radio the other day, I'd never heard it before, and the lyrics were so specific. So the, it was a country song, and it was talking about 
I want to know if you're the kind of girl that kisses on a first date. I want to know what your uh, wrist tattoo Bible verse states. I want it like it was so specific. And I was thinking, oh, my gosh, first of all, it was a good little jam. It was interesting. But he was speaking directly to this girl. Now, there's hundreds of thousands of them that relate to that. They connect deeply. There's other people that are just bopping their head along and it's cool. And they might download the song and and they might become a fan of his. But that girl with the wrist Bible verse tattoo, she's in the front row. She's going to see him at CMA. She's on, in the fan club. Like that's that was creating such a diehard fan. They feel like that song is about them. And they connect to it and they're, you know, singing loudly. Um, and they then they become advocates of him. And of course, this is really specific to that into that specific song or that example but that's what brands can do and there are people that are yeses and those are your loyal customers those are your your advocates and your early adapters there are maybes those are the people that might get tickets to the concert when it comes to town download a couple songs and they just needed to hear some of the music and they're and then they become a yes and there's the no's and those are the people that are never going to listen to country music and he's not writing songs for them He's, it has nothing to do with that, but, you know. Great I yeah. had, it is, it's a great example. I had a strategy call yesterday. Um, I had made a video uh, that was um, why some entrepreneurs succeed and, and some don't, yeah. right? And uh, I got a lot of traffic on it, a lot of engagement, and... Um, I put a um, a link to a study guide in it, right? Yeah. And uh, that led to a funnel that set up strategy calls. So I've been getting like a lot of strategy calls through that, and it's been pretty exciting. And then a, I talked to a guy yesterday, and he said, Alex, you read my mind. And I can't tell you what a big compliment that is. Sure. When it's just like this country star, right? This country song. This mm -hmm. guy knew who he was talking to and knew them so intimately that yeah. it was, he could talk almost as if it's just sitting on a park bench having a conversation yeah. with him. Okay. And so um, that I hear that frequently because on that side of my business, I understand that, you know, that my client really, really well because I've been with them for five years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but you know, even for our client here, we know what our ideal client is struggling with. And and, yeah. and I think that the videos that we make really, really go towards that. So when you hear that, and eventually you will, when you understand the psychological and emotional impact of somebody living with the problem mm -hmm. that they live with yeah. and that you're the solution, they're literally buying their future self, and that's where leadership comes in, and that's what video can do for you is it really provides leadership. It really provides that ability for you to be the thought leader, the industry leader. Yeah, that's and great, yeah. In many cases, in the case of coaches and, and, and some products and some services, where you're yeah. helping somebody totally reframe their life. So yeah. video is such a great way into that because I get so many emotional things back. Like, yeah. I need this right uh, or or what a great thing to start my day with so let me ask you when you said in the beginning you were sort of for the people listening who are sort of in that boat where they're like I don't really know my one person I'm talking to I'm not I think I can do this for them but I also offer this or that um, you know how did you discern and how did you listen to the feedback you got from your content that helped you delineate who you were speaking to how did you do that so I I listened for buzzwords and I would read a lot of comments. I would hear things like I struggle with, or I hate it when complaints, when you see complaints on online, they're really hidden fears, right? Yeah. Now, oh. if somebody's product sucks, sometimes somebody's product just sucks and they're like, this yeah. sucks. That's yeah. not a hidden fear. That's just somebody saying, but if they're saying things like I struggle with or this or that, and they're sort of complaining about their own life, 
Um, that's a hidden fear and that's a thing sure. they're obsessing about. So I look for those words. I really, really, really pay attention to the language they use. Right. And then when I hear enough of that, I know that's a pattern. I know that that is how this group of people thinks. And so now my clients fit kind of nine behaviors, right? And I can say that fairly confidently, but I just found a new one, right? I just found kind of what destination they wanted to arrive, sort of started, I started hearing new language. So it changes. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely, yeah. It definitely yeah. changes. Like I have this Swedish cat who's been following me since day one. You know, he's never bought, he'll never buy, but <laughs> he comments on everything and he, he writes me and he tells me that he's grateful and he does all of this stuff. Uh -huh. um, and, and like, he's a different cat, right? He's a different guy who is never gonna buy, but he's such a vibrant part of the community that I don't have the heart to say, dude, you know, like shit or get yeah. off the pot, but yes. he's, he's not going to do either, right? right. So, uh, but he he contributes, and that's what matters. So I, I know what what they where they want to go, mm -hmm. right? And also in terms of, and Alex, you taught me this. In terms of finding those complaints or people who are expressing, uh, you know, problems they're having, just Google. Like go on Google, look on Facebook, look on Reddit. I was like, was a gold mine. Um, oh my goodness. And, and I had, yeah, I was spent way too much time on it. But uh, I had an, my acting coach, like in terms of when you do find your audience, in terms of like actually engaging with them, because I know people do feel like, some people feel intimidated when the camera's just looking at them, even if they are. First of all, narrowing it down to one person helps so much because it oh feels like you're not just addressing like, I'd say going into filming without having an audience almost feels like you're addressing a large crowd versus just mm -hmm. one person. So if you could like sit and this, I don't, this might sound funny to people, but like have a, have a conversation with that person off camera and then go in front of the camera and talk to them and you'll notice you'll feel soup much more connected. You'll be present and everything you're saying is going to sound more like authentic and genuine. Yeah. That, that idea of relaxing. Yeah. Right. I mean, as soon as the camera goes on, you can see people's yeah. shoulders go up around their ears, their voice changes, it gets a little higher. That's right? a if you can just it. take a deep breath yeah. and, <laughs> and, and relax. And then what did you always want to say? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. What's the thing? So if you know where you want to go, I mean, some people start at the end, right? Some people start outlining their video at the end and then reverse engineering. I think Callahan, you do that. You know where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So if you know where you're going to land, it's okay to jump. Right. And, yeah. and I think that, that those are, are, are great pointers for people. Um, breathe three times, just take three deep breaths yeah. and let it rip. And, and if you're not concentrated on what you're saying, because most people bring two people into the room, right? They bring themselves and that inner editor asshole who lives in your head who tells you you suck. Yep. Yeah. And are you sure you want to say that? Well, what they're going to think is, is that you're a racist asshole. Yeah. Right? You said that wrong. Like, or, yeah. you know, like that. No, no. Most people are very forgiving and understand where you are. And if they're getting the information they want, right? Totally. Then, um, you know, and, and you're going to get some, some, some feedback from that crazy son of a bitch who's out there who just wants to troll, right? We'll all get trolls and maybe we can do a podcast on trolls. Yes. And one thing I will say about that is if you are keeping true to yourself, if you are being authentic, if you are being genuine, those trolls and those people, like they're not shit. If they, if you are putting on a show and the things they say start to get to you and you but but you're being yourself like nip it in the bud. If there's noticing cracks in in the armor because you're trying to put on a facade and that's what really you're feeling inside, then it's time to let that down and just do do you. Be who you really are at that point. Like Absolutely. And you know, if people are people who are the most sort of 
trolly and desperate will yeah. attack a physical attribute of you. They'll pick oh, yeah. out the one thing and they'll find that thing and they'll that try to make bad. that your weakness. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's when they're really bad people. Like I oh, can imagine yes. them like cooking a lone piece of white bread over a single burner on a hanger. You know, <laughs> in, a, in a one bedroom apartment, just gnawing on dry toast, getting mad at people going, this knocker, you would crazy here. Well, also, like, you have to think, like, if somebody is taking time out of their day to comment on a stranger's video to put them down, like, that's sad. I don't have enough time to do that. Like, I don't, I'd way rather watch a TV show or, like, do something else. Like, who, you know, it's just, just you we, have to we, we, this is a whole other subject like yeah. we should save yeah. this for another we podcast will. because we i think that it is a, a great point because like we said last in the last episode people will not make videos because of five people uh, on yes, their that's... facebook page that are like freaking janet's gonna hate it right yep. she's gonna come out of the woodwork and say you know you suck yeah. why are you doing this who do you think you are and like, if those people are the ones stopping you, like unfriend them now, get rid of them. They're dead weight, right? Even if they're your- but most often they won't. Well, interestingly, especially if you're, they're good friends, a lot of times like yeah. that's not the audience you're gonna be selling to. Your good friends aren't really usually gonna buy your product. So yeah. first of all, they're, they're not good friends if they're shitting on what you're putting out, but also, True. yeah. And, and I had that issue too, where I saw like, oh, these people are, are making fun of what I'm doing. So I'm, that was just a, you know, a cue to and let those people, what? And now they're all oh yeah. Well, one, one is, but, um, yeah, a marketer told me that like years ago, she was just like, don't worry about what your friends are saying because would any of those people buy your product? And I was like, no, actually. So yeah, you do have to, to, you know. What you realize once you get far enough into your business is that you start surrounding yourself with people that contribute to the greater good of what you're doing mm -hmm. and that you're contributing to the greater good of what they're doing. And video is such a great opportunity to give more than you take, right? Like if you, 100%, take, of course. you know, if you take 45%, right? and they get the rest, you're, you've, you've done your job, but you're still full of abundance at that point, Yeah. right? There's plenty to go around. And, and that's the thing is, video is an opportunity not to come from a place of scarcity, totally. right? Video is an opportunity to talk about the ideal life and the destination we want to all get to, which is freedom. We're right? And I don't mean freedom, the flag waving freedom. I mean, we get to go where we want to go when we want to go. We get to, you know, purchase some of the things we've always wanted to purchase. We get to, to, to have resources we didn't have before. We get to hire people that make our job easier and buy our right. time back. Right. And video is such a great way to do that. It has changed everything I do. Right. I mean, it is. Yes, I started out in filmmaking, but from an entrepreneurial standpoint, I was a newbie too. Five years ago, this was a whole new kind of thing. I had to put myself out there. I am so sorry. On the camera, and I could be, I could disappear. It's awesome. Actually, so our video for next week is going to go in depth with audio. Alex, do you want to talk a little bit about what's coming up that people can expect? Yeah, so we're going oh. to, I'm going to show you how to. If you want to do stuff outside, one of the things you're going to notice if you're using a wireless mic that's that's uh, clipped on to your lapel or you don't want people to see it. So it's really a cleaner look for people not to see your mic. So next week's video is going to be about how to make a super low pro profile clip out of gaff tape or even duct tape um, so that it's seamless. And the other thing that it's going to do is it protects from the wind like amazingly. Yeah. So if you want to shoot outside, and it also stops rustling. So if you want to hide your mic, very often you'll you'll just tape it there, and your shirt will rub up against it, and you'll have right. It eliminates that. It's a two-minute hack 
that is so much fun and and I use it like completely. I haven't used a clip oh, yeah. to, to hide a mic or a piece of that goofy tape they try to sell you. Um, it's the biggest, the best hack I've ever got. Cool. Awesome. So that'll be next week, audio. Yeah. So we've got some cool stuff for you guys to check out. Hopefully you will. Um, wherever you're watching this, or if you're just listening, make sure you follow us for each of our bi-weekly episodes. Do that. Sign up for our YouTube channel. Subscribe. Smash the like button so that you're, you're, we, we can continue to make these videos. Press the notification button so that people, uh, so that you're notified of when we make new videos because we've got a lot of great stuff coming out. And, uh, you know, can't wait to, to dive back in. Thanks for watching and comment what your biggest mistakes are that you know you're making or that you have made um, because that's how other people can learn and grow too. So I really want to see kind of where you guys are at right now. And like I said, where do you aim to be? Where do you want to grow into? And keep filming. Keep filming. Keep, Just keep doing it. <laughs> keep doing it. Yes, absolutely. Yep.